Alright, hello again YouTube! Welcome back to more Kerbal. Now, today I mentioned we're going to try and do, uh, well I mentioned it yesterday, oh in yesterday's episode anyway, that we're going to try and do a Minimus Landing. We're going to do that, we're not going to do it straight away, because I realised our problem last time was not having a signal. Well, what would be a good way to solve that? How about having a satellite up there to bounce the signal off of? We have a little bit of extra science, I believe we have enough for, yeah, one more bit of research. So we could potentially go into parts construction would give us some of those basic servo parts and whatnot. Uh, Fisher Pulse would give us, start to give us some bigger engines and things. We've got lifters for really big engines. Uh, propulsion systems. That's probably what we're going to take. I'll go over that in a sec. Oil fuel systems good for some bigger tanks. But we're going to go for propulsion because it gives us small engines. But we're going to be doing some a small satellite. And the reason you go smaller is because it's lighter and simpler. It doesn't take much fuel to push around a uh, very small satellite compared to a very big one. The same amount of fuel that we used on the uh, station in the last one, yeah, on the tube. This amount of fuel would probably push a very small probe to like 3k delta V rather than like, you know, 800. Octo core. Antenna, this is going to be a big part of this one. Ah, micro relay antenna, that sounds excellent. Oh, that is small, okay. Should it be big enough? On rover one. Yeah, no, I think that'll be okay. So, I guess it's going there, that's where it seems to want to go. Not line up with that. Oh, is it? It can line up, it's just upside down at the moment. Yeah, like that. And then we'll add this battery. Tell you what, let's do cylinder battery, solar panels. We'll need to get some better ones of these soon. That should do for now. Never set our probe to be uh, particularly complicated. We'll add a single extra reaction wheel to balance out that against that antenna and also gives a bit more control. I think the Octo does have some built in. Uh, SO1. Uh, Wi Fi. Should wait, do we already have an SO1? Just checking, nope. It could be used uh, by the Kerbals in their off time for things such as, well, its namesake. I'm sure. Right. Oh, get away with a pretty small tank. We have a very small thruster on the top stage. And a an single ant engine. <coughs> Uh, okay, maybe even that. Maybe that is a little optimistic, even for a tiny probe such as this. 843, nearly enough. I'm gonna try to put it into polar orbit, so we'll need a little bit of fuel. That's all right, but now we have a terrible burn time. Um, oh, I'll do a few of these. 2k across three minutes. That's not. That's not awful. Could even put these high up. <coughs> uh, we probably shouldn't, though, for the sake of accidentally burning the tanks. Okay. I'll probably do it. Yeah, I guess that's how this cut for all look. In the rounded shape. Yeah, I don't like how that looks. That's fine. We'll just all shred it. Make it gold or just bare metal? Yeah, make it gold. Why not? Do anything with these? Change the looks? Just that. Okay, nope. Guess that's how it's going to be. Right. Doesn't need science equipment. This is just for transmitting. <coughs> Let's, however, give it a... What's the next? What's the next size of a fairing? The motor of its... Actually, the motor of its fairings might be fixed, but this is about the right size for it, actually. No, it isn't. Not quite. Ah, that's frustrating, actually. It's almost the right size. Don't really tend to use uh, fixed size fairings. That's not quite right. Okay, we're not using the, uh, not using the ones from Universal, then. Maybe we go all size 1. Okay. Let's look at an antenna on the outside, because remember, stashed away antennas don't work. I think technically the one on the main craft still does, but... Just in case, because I've had some issues with it before, I tend to make sure I stick a uh, 
cheat little fixed antenna like that one on the side to just handle getting off the ground. And I've only got to get to orbit. Even if it's polar, we've only got to get up to orbit, so we won't need a lot of fuel here. Well, these not... Oh, hydrogen engine. I see. I haven't seen these engines before. What are you actually from? Is this more Commonwealth? Western Aeronautics. Hmm. That seems to be a little bit worse in general. CV-15, cheap one. Uh, actually, can we just get to orbit on a 45? Not reliably. Okay. Tell you what, actually, if we did just do a terrier, right? This thing's really light. Yeah, it's still got a thrust weight of above one. We just have a single hammer on the bottom. It's probably even going to be overkill by the time we have this, but not a mic. That that actually isn't big enough. Uh, yeah. This is what I meant last time about going light. We've got 5k delta V out of this thing. It's teeny. Yeah, this should be a quite capable of launching our little relay satellite for doing our, our minimus mission. We are starting a bit small, but hey ho, that's the way it goes. So, we won't worry about... Keep the stages to a minimum. Three stage. Polar orbit. We'll try and get it fairly high, maybe 500,000. Uh, yeah, 500,000 meters. 500 kilometers up. I prefer miles when I'm driving around in the car, but I definitely prefer kilometers for stuff like space. It seems to make more sense there. Right. Three, two, one, let's go. We're going to be tilting a different direction with this one. We're going to be tilting forwards rather than to the right because we want to go north. Which is, of course, down the mini-map. Now, again, we will need a bit more fuel for this because it's we don't get the advantage of uh, planet's rotation because, of course, we're not going towards the planet's rotation. Shoot, I see the other stage on right away. Terriers are typically used to slow in the atmosphere, but <coughs> well, technically we're already through the thick bit. Yes, technically a terrier would be an orbital engine, but the rocket itself is so light that it actually should work here. Go up to me. Well, mm, do we want to go up high and then adjust it? Or maybe just spike for going high straight away. We'll talk, we will to it. We'll tilt over the 45 though. I'm pretty sure you can technically tell. Um... Yeah, well, let's have a look at this stability assist. I think we can tell Vector to do this for us, right? Advanced reference. A little bit? No. No. <coughs> no, I'm not going to worry about it. I clearly don't understand how that one works. Thought I'd set a screen where you could adjust it to like a set angle specifically, but yeah, so we're going upwards this time. We'll probably will have to adjust our um inclination to get it fully polar, but at least close to polar, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Might even be tempted just to go up to 150. Well, the higher would be good if we can do it. Go up to like 200. Then we can make it higher with what fuel we have left once we're circularized, and we know we're gonna not just like fall out of the sky. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have plenty to make adjustments with, I think. But yeah, sometimes going small looking make you go further. <coughs> you can see 2200 on that tiny little lap of stage. through and ejecting. Jesus. 
I think somebody got shot. <laughs> Why was that bang so loud? That one in particular. Why is that fuel tank semi-transparent, but only at very certain angles? Must be something to do with the... Sh yeah, it's something to do with the shader on Kerbal. Or Kerbin. Is that true for all the parts? No, it's only that one, though. Is it? No, it is all of them. Ah. Huh. Set the solar panels. Weird. That's a new bug even for me. Uh, not sure what's going on there. Just I need to a circular orbit. Okay, so we're in orbit. It's a little lumpy. Kind of look like an extra ring around Uranus or something, but, uh... Change inclination. That's, like, what angle you're orbiting at, so... I was going to say flat like that one, but they're not really flat. Flat, perfectly flat, relative to everything else, would be zero degrees. Vertical like this is 90. Just it can be expensive, depending on how you do it, so... It's a maneuver you typically want to be further away from the planet for as well, which I believe it. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on this, but I believe it's cheaper to do when you're further away from the planet. So you can keep that in mind when planning flights if you need to do an inclination change for whatever reason. <coughs> I leave it to MechJeb, so I just sort of have to deal with however much it says it's going to cost me. up a little bit, let's do the majority of the burn, and so down for the last bit. Here's a nice stable rocket. St stable? Stable rocket. It's nice, or I guess satellite technically at this point. There we go, that's maybe not quite perfectly vertical, but it's pretty good. And then let's adjust our altitude. So change apparatus. Yeah, I was going to say, we could probably actually go for a million, even we can go higher than we were originally planning. So the good news would be, the reason we go for Polar is because we actually have a very good signal up there, and we, though it slightly depends on which way we're facing, you've got a pretty good chance of being visible. When you're that high up, there's not that many, it's only when you're directly behind it, so that means you have a very good chance of getting good coverage. Of course, the way they get perfect coverage in real life is they put them to very specific orbits and time them and everything. Uh, that's not something I'm either interested or very good at doing. Uh, I can do it. I have done it before, but I'm not a fan. I believe there even was a bit of a flaff in, a previous seri in the previous Kerbal series. I was trying to work out uh, if I had remote tech and it was a lot stricter how to get a... I think I was like working out like... How do I get this satellite up? By the time it goes up to higher orbit, I lose signal with it. It's like, Doug, Doug, just let it orbit for a bit and just wait until the space set is underneath you and then you can circularize. It's just like, oh. Right, yes, I can do that. I'm being dumb. Right, circularize at Apple Apps. Yeah, there we go. Nice high orbit. Once you're in space, actually getting around it is not very difficult. Just a matter of time and a little bit of fuel applied in the right place. It really is the majority of it spent just getting off the ground. At least for now. We'll be doing some bigger burns later that'll need a lot more, but for now at least this is true. Even then, still probably the heaviest bits of those crafts will be the bits to get them into space. Still very much in the era of conventional rockets, or even just early conventional rockets, I suppose, at the moment. We haven't got any particularly big ones yet, so. That ought to do it. We, of course, already have our lander designed, so let's go and launch another one. Hey, Senna. That'll be up there to talk to it and hopefully relay a signal back to us so we won't miss out on anything important. Very quickly while it loads. Right. Wait, we need to go to the thing. We're going for the number two. 
I just realized I don't know if I saved it with the um uh landing legs, although it might not matter because we've got if we're going to minimus gravity solo, we could just sit on the rocket uh engine. I think I would have saved it. I usually do. Yes, okay, we're good. Ah, uh, three, two, one. There. Not a complicated launch. This is about the fourth time we've flown this rocket, so or whatever run at this point, so we're getting a hang of how these fly. The trick this time is we've got to go the whole way. Are we doing a mat landing manually? So that'll be interesting. But we're gonna aim for one of the uh, nice flat planes, the easiest thing to land on in the entire solar system in terms of the actual you know coming down onto a process aside from Kerbin Kerbin because aside from the mountains Kerbin is pretty safe to land on anywhere as long as you've got parachutes and a, a heat shield if you're coming from far enough away and even then if you've got something solid on your uh, rocket somewhere and maybe some fuel you can get away with some pretty rough stuff in terms of the landings even on a uh, on Kerbin specifically so that perfect zone where it's actually quite friendly to land on. The atmosphere isn't quite as thick, all the gravity is heavy as Eve, so it's a lot more forgiving than that. It's got an atmosphere so you don't have to go down under your own power. That's actually quite a nice shot. Look how that looks. I do I do tend to find myself doing that sometimes in Kerbal, I'll just find a nice uh, shot and just screenshot it. So I like how a uh, certain bit looks. Stage one, yeah, that's right. I don't know. Getting going a little higher so we don't have to worry about drag dropping us back too much. We don't want to get out of the atmosphere and good to go. Yeah, warping. <coughs> also, landing legs. I was wondering what those were. That's like, wait, are we supposed to kind of flaps? What's going on there? It's the uh, feet on the landing legs. Sun's in the right place to see them. Okay, neatly in orbit. It's in this bit before again. It's just a case of getting to the last step of it. Oh god. Okay, fuel's tighter this time. <coughs> I think my burn might have been a bit too steep, so we might have to go in for just landing in the first place we can. Let's skip all the circularization next extra step. We don't, we'll do a low flyby and I'll maybe get us to Minmus. That, well, actually, I'll just, just I'll do it off screen, but actually, honestly, I don't think if this could actually. If this can't do it now, it actually probably isn't capable of doing it, so. If this can't do it, we probably need a rethink and a redesign. You ditch that parachute that I keep forgetting about for one thing and save the way there. Oh, yeah, that is a bit tight. Hmm. Alright. 
Alright. Give it a try. Don't you have an encounter? We don't even have an encounter. Come on. Fine tune closest thing. Hurry up to zero. A tiny amount of delta V to do that. Sort of drop us onto the surface. We're just going to land wherever we're coming into land. And it's 12k. See what I mean about fine tune not being the most precise? Don't know if that's just because the rocket itself can't manage it or what, but. Is going to land on it at the moment? Nope. Retrograde, we don't have time to pick a landing. We don't have fuel to pick a landing, so. Burn very gently. We brought down to the. Zero. Okay. We won't quick save yet because we still have time to revert and, um, Uh, and then do the low flyby. <coughs> there we go. So suicide burn is basically the exact moment where you would just gun your engines to maximum and you will be at landing speed by the time you hit the ground, basically. Oh boy, and it's going to be close. Now we're not moving very fast. Back jam, back jam. You didn't account for the hill, did you, back jam? <coughs> Thank you, Vector. Yo? <laughs> um... He's returning to space! Has he got a high enough altitude to clear that hill? No, he's gonna hit it. That was amazing. Oh, he tried to be free, but he couldn't quite manage it. Okay, let's try that again. That might be doable, but certainly not if it's going to do that. So, yeah, where are we at this point? If we do... Hmm... Up a tiny bit more fuel. It was 10 seconds this time. A little bit longer, just in case. I thought it was supposed to count for things like that, but I guess it didn't. Yeah, it looks like we're going to miss the hill this time. Abort, abort, abort. I saw where you were going with that, Mac. If you were going to hit that hill. Now do it. A little bit slower, you're closer to the ground. I think it's going to be a bit of a rough landing, but we're going to try for it. Basically, going to gun it when we're near the ground. And go. Hey! Irritation did not let us roll. I think it be off for now. It was a little rough, but... Now... Rotation... Now. Okay, we've got enough control. We can actually sort of adjust how we sit on the surface. Okay. 
Excellent. Any lander you can walk away from, as they say. And we have... Our satellite? No, we've got a direct signal today, but the satellite would have been there to back us up if we needed it. Right. Let's see what we can do for data. Temperature scan. 40 sides. We won't be getting all of it, because again, we need to actually bring it back for that. 50 for the atmospheric material study. I'll try and actually get some kerbals out to it, maybe next episode. Material study. Yeah, see what I mean? We get like half for uh, transmitting it. And pressure scan. That must have been Mystery Goo, the other one then. Alright. Transmit. Transmit all. Don't have to time warp because it's going to run out of power before it gets transmitted. Yeah, a good try, does actually work. Right, excellent. So that data has been returned to the Space Center, and we can see what we want to research left. Probably, I would say, fuel, bigger fuel tanks and engines. Hundred and fifty. We definitely got enough for one. And yeah, I'm thinking fuel systems for larger tanks, although we don't really have any engines to use them with yet. We do have a couple of larger things, right? We probably want lifters, I would say, not efficient, because we're we've got a lot of small efficient engines. Yeah, we'll go for lifters. Oh, we even do get a couple of tanks of it. Excellent. Octopus, these are new. A lot of these I recognise like the Bobcat and things like this. No about a Viking engine either. There we go. <coughs> Everyone launch more our space stations. Here's a thought. What's a docking port take us? Is it advanced construction gives us the basic one? Give us some bigger separators. Tubes and there's a few robotics joints. Uh no, maybe not. Hmm, okay. We get docking. Oh, Actuators, I think it is, isn't it? Crabbing unit. Crabbing unit. No, where's docking? I thought docking was, um... That, am I wrong? Adapter... Hmm. I could have sworn it was something like that. Specialized construction? Oh, clam patrol. Specialized construction, okay. Right, a little earlier in than the last time, when it ran very long, but I think that's about good. So I'll call the episode there. Hopefully you've all enjoyed, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, feel, free, feel free to suggest any, like, launch ideas, anything you'd like me to try and launch or fly or whatever. Because we're in science mode, we can have a bit of fun with this. I might even just launch a plane of some sort next episode for the fun of it. But yes, see you guys soon. Goodbye.